here I am. Let's see how this goes. Hi there. Welcome to a lovely yarn podcast. My name is Amber and this is actually the only, only the second episode I've ever filmed. Um, but my goal with this podcast is to have a place to come and talk about fiber related things. Um, my main craft is knitting. I also crochet a lot. That's I've actually been crocheting for a much longer time than I've been knitting. I've been crocheting since I was eight and um, I've been knitting for the last five years. I also spin yarn and uh, I do some felting. We just, you know, whatever I find, um, some embroidery, but this will mostly be about knitting and some crocheting and spinning as well. So today I have plans to talk about um, some of my, well, I don't have any completed objects because I've been doing a lot of commission orders. So I had four commission orders that I just finished and I just received another one yesterday, but it's an easy one, so um, it should be a quick, it should be a quick knit. So I haven't had a whole lot of time to focus on my knitting, so I don't have any finished items to show you, except for one. I do have one, um, but it was finished a few weeks ago, but I just wanted to show it today. So yeah, so other than that, I want to talk about my knitting goals for the next few months. And I have some goodies that I bought myself that I was going to share with you from a couple, a couple different indie dyers. So that is what is the plan for today. I do not have show notes. I probably should have written something down. I hear that a lot from podcasters that they have show notes, but I didn't take the time to do that. So here I am. Let's see how this goes. My farmhouse shawl that I showed you last week, I have that, and it's grown a little bit, not not a whole lot, but um, it's long enough now that it's really scrunched up on the needles, so you're not going to be able to really, it's not going to go the whole way down, but it's getting close. I think I have two sections of the pattern left, and then after that, after I bind off, I will put fringe all along the edging. It's a really pretty shawl. I made one last year for my sister, and I put a picture of that one in my podcast episode last time. Um, and it's just a really nice, this is a wool blend, so I think it's 30 uh, merino and 70 acrylic. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's a UK yarn. I don't have the ball band, I'm sorry. But when I bought it, it came in this humongous, humongous skein. In fact, look, you can see like how much is left still and I've knitted a lot so yeah it's a nice big skein but it's got flecks of black and brown in it and it's so it's kind of tweedy looking so I really like it and I need to get it finished so that I can wear it on these cold frigid days because it's definitely going to be one of those things that are going to be cozy and warm and again, this is the farmhouse shawl pattern by Cabin 4 on Ravelry. Really pretty. I love, I love Cabin 4 designs because I think they're really simple and classic, yet very effective in making a statement. And when I say a statement, I don't mean like, wow, look at me, more like a, I, I'm not a wow, look at me type of knitter. I. Steven West patterns. Okay, there's a couple. Is I think he has like the the bone yard shawl, or I could be totally screwing that name up. I have one of his patterns saved to my Ravelry, Ravelry favorites, but most of his stuff is a little just too outrageous for me. So he's that's not my style as a knitter. My style is more of the just simple knit, simple lines. Um, yeah, not, I'm not a um, neon pink, neon orange, neon green. These socks I'm making that I just showed you, they're pretty bright, but um, they're socks, they're on my feet. <laughs> they're not like up here, you know, and that's just the way I am. I actually look at people that wear knitted stuff and that knit like really bright colored stuff and I, I just think like, way to go, like go for it. They, I, yeah, I just can't. I don't know. It's not my style, and that's okay, because we all have different styles, right? 
Right. Okay. And this, this shawl I've been working on. Oh my goodness. I started this in the car in May when we went to Tennessee in 2017. So last year. And I, <laughs> it's a really easy pattern. It's called Sicily's Shawl. It's a Quince & Co. It was a, a pattern written for Quince & Co. And let me show you the picture of what it's supposed to look like. And my paper, I think I was running out of like a color ink. And so the ink is really bad and it's all wrinkly, but I don't know if you can see that, but there it is. It's really pretty. It's a really pretty shawl. And again, very simple, a very simple shawl. However, I messed it up. I knitted. So, okay. So we have like a 10 hour drive to Tennessee from where we live. And I didn't knit the entire time, but I knitted a great portion of the time. And then one of the nights we were there, I picked up my knitting. I picked up the shawl to work on. And I was like, why is this not like, why is one side way longer than the other side? It's supposed to be a symmetrical shawl in like it comes to the point, it's triangular in each side. It's not asymmetrical, but somehow I had made it that way and it didn't look right and it wasn't going to fit me right. And so I ripped it out. I was, I couldn't believe it. I felt like, oh my gosh, all those hours wasted. But the only good thing is, is I was just sitting in the car with nothing to do anyway. It's not like I could have been doing stuff at home, like stuff that needed done. I was just sitting in the car. So anyway, this, I want to show you the colors that I have that I'm doing this. It's a three color, three color shawl. And it's, it's used, it's using the chickadee yarn, which I don't remember. It seems to be like maybe DK weight. Not very good with keeping my ball bands in my bags. I usually just keep them down on my table in my, my craft room. Okay, so these are the colors that I'm using. Um, this really pretty blush pink. And then this is like a, like a cranberry color. And then this is a very deep purple. It looks, it's coming across, I think it's kind of brown. And it does have brown undertones, but it's, um, it's purple. Okay. I don't know if that helps. No, not really. So it's going to be those three colors and you just alternate, you alternate the sections. So like I said, I had to rip back and actually I ripped back and I got so frustrated that I did just this. I just did this. And then I was like, okay, I am not going to work on this anymore. I had brought at least another project. I don't even remember, but don't you, don't we take a gazillion projects when we go on vacation? Cause you know, you never know what you're going to be in the mood to knit knit. And so I put, I did this much and maybe I didn't even do this till on the car ride home. I can't remember, but I worked on another project, um, instead. So I picked this up last night and I thought I need to start this again now that my commission orders are done, because this is a really nice, it's soft. Um, it's really pretty. I love the colors. So I need to get it done because I want to wear it. So yes, that is another work and project. Oh, and I just want to show you this bag. This is from Olivia, this handmade life. I think I'm probably going to mention Olivia a lot. I mentioned her in my last podcast because I did an advent calendar exchange with her, but she made this for me. It's a drawstring bag and she embroidered these flowers on it. And then on the inside, it has a different, I love this fabric. It's got this pretty floral botanical print. So it's a beautiful, beautiful bag. I just love it. I wish I could make bags like this. I sew, but I do very basic sewing. And I don't have the time right now to learn how to do more complex stuff, but maybe one day. Maybe one day. I don't want to speed time ahead because I love my children and I homeschool them and I love the time I get to spend with them. But I think maybe one day I will have more time and if not, that's okay. But it's one of those things that I aspire to do. I aspire to learn how to, to, um, to sew better when I have more time someday. Okay. And, oh yeah, I forgot. I do have a finished, pro finished project 
But I don't know if it counts because I finished it right before Christmas, but I'm going to make it count because I just wanted to talk about it. Okay, because it was my first cable project. And I had heard, first I was really intimidated by cables, and then I had then I started to hear, oh, cables are easy. You know, it's nothing, it's nothing to be afraid of. So I thought, all right. So my sister, or my sister, my daughter's piano teacher, um, I like to get her something for Christmas. And so I wanted to knit her something. I really wanted to knit her a pair of socks, but I just didn't have the time for that because <laughs> typical Amber fashion, I waited until the day before. Yeah, um, the day before her piano lesson. So that was my problem right there. So I needed something quick, which I, I knew it was going to be a hat and it was going to be bulky yarn. And I wanted to do something different than just a plain knit hat. So I decided to find a cable hat that I could do. And um, this was a pattern I got on Ravelry. It was free. I will try to locate it and link it in the show notes. But it's super easy, yet I love the look of it. It's so classic looking. Now, why do I still have this hat that I made for her piano teacher? Well, because it was my first time doing cables and I did not realize that I had a tight gauge. I hold the yarn very tight. So I had to take a little pause there because Lily just brought me my kitty cats. This is one of four. This is Desi. He's my favorite because he's the only one that cuddles. Huh. You're the only cuddly kitty. Yes, you are. He's my buddy. Okay, well, there you go. All right. So, yes, this cable hat. Um, so I ended up, I, ha I tried it on and it fit me, but it was tight. And then I had my daughter try it on and it fit her, but it was tight as well. And she, I had her, she just kept it on her head for a while and it kept like moving up her head from being so tight. So I was like, all right, I, I can't give that to her. I got to make another one. So that same night I cast on for another one and, um, I don't even think I went up a needle. I think I was just, I tried to be very careful. I may have gone up, I may have gone up to a 15 us 15 instead of a 13, but I also was, was careful not to keep not, you know, not to have a real tight tension when I was, when I was knitting and it turned out much better. So it looked exactly like this, only a tad bit bigger. And now this, I have this, and I think I'm going to send it to a friend of mine who has daughters, young daughters, because I think that um, she'd really love it. And this is just Lion Brand yarn. I think this is actually just an acrylic blend, but it's got like the tweed look to it. I'm a big fan of tweed. Um, I, I, when I make things for other people, I always make it in a, a brand that is, or a yarn that's washable in case they don't want to mess around with hand washing their items. So that's all the knitted items that I have, like my works in pro progress. Um, oh, I wanted to show, I wanted to show some hand knit yarn that I spun. Hand knit yarn, hand spun yarn. Okay, so this is the fiber. I don't think that's showing very well. It's deeper. This, the, the camera is kind of make, it looks lighter on the camera. It doesn't look as rich and it's not a real dark yarn, but it's got like mauves, pinks, um, some blue, some burgundy in it. So this is what I started with. And this is what I got. Let me zoom up on this one. Okay, there we go. I love this. It's not showing the deepness of the pink. It's like a very mauvey pink color with the flecks of the blue and the darker burgundy and stuff. Yeah, I just, I really like this color. I'm a fan of um, certain shades of pink and this happens to be in that, oh boy, there we go that shade that I like. So I actually bought a ton of this. I don't even know how many ounces I bought. Usually when you buy fiber, you get like a four ounce braid. I think maybe I bought 12 ounces because I liked it so much. 
and I don't know what I'm going to make. I have all this hand spun that I don't have plans for and I think it's because I'm like waiting for the perfect project because when you when you spin your yarn it's a process. It's a long process. You know, you well, this fiber came prepared, but when I spin my alpaca fiber, I have to wash it. I have to comb it out. It takes forever to do that because I just have hand carters. I don't have like a drum carter. Um, but even when I'm not using my alpaca fiber or my angora fiber, I still have to, you know, you spin it, then you have to ply it, then you have to heat it so that it relaxes, then you have to hang it up to dry. So it's like a really long process and I love the process, but when I finish, I'm like, oh my goodness, I want to make sure that I save this for the perfect project. And so I've only knit one thing out of my hand spun, which was a shawl for my daughter. And that is pathetic. I really need to get cracking on knitting some projects for my hand spun because if not, it's just going to sit down there and accumulate on the shelf. Okay. So next, oh, I have one more thing, but I don't think I'm able to fit it on the camera. I have this crocheted granny stripe blanket that I've been working on. I started it last year. So the story behind this is that I found a pattern on Ravelry for a, I think it was like a triangular shaped shawl that was made out of granny stripes. And I loved it. And so I had yarn that I had bought in Maine and the yarn is Kramer yarn. Perfection by Kramer Yarns. This is a 30% merino, 70% acrylic. And the funny thing is, is I bought this up in Bar Harbor, Maine when we were on vacation, but it's actually spun in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. So I thought, oh, that's so ironic. Anyway, so I bought, um, I bought three or four different colors of this, which this is a deeper, more cranberry red than what's showing up. Um, and I bought it just because I liked the colors and I figured I would find something to do with it. And then I found this pattern, this granny stripe pattern on, um, on Ravelry. And I started it and then I was like, before I started decreasing to make the shape of the shawl, I thought, wait a second, I need to make this into an afghan because it's beautiful and I love these colors. And so that's what I did. I ordered more yarn and I've been working on that. I've had to order more yarn twice and I just realized last night that I'm probably going to have to place another order because I made this wider. I think I made it wider than what I probably originally anticipated making. So here it is and it's, it's big. When I stand up and it, it touches the floor, it comes to about here on me. So I still have a little ways to go yet because I want to make sure that it's nice and long. When I make afghans, I like them to be big because I'm, I am five, nine, so I'm not real tall, but I'm tall enough that, you know, a normal throw that you buy at the store is not going to cover my whole body. So when I make my afghans, I like to make them long enough to be, so I can completely fit. And like when I'm laying down, stretch my legs out and still, they'll still be covered. So yeah, this is, um, that's what I'm making here. And honestly, like some of this, I ended up using yarns other than just the Kramer. Like this green is Cascade. I don't even know what this gray is. It might be Lion Brand. That's another thing. Like when I, when I crochet Afghans, I, I have, to, I always try to find a yarn that can be washed in the washer because hand washing a large Afghan would be crazy be crazy. So that is this and I need to finish it again, you know, because it's winter and we need to have this to be able to cuddle under. Okay. So now I want to talk about some knitting plans that I have. I don't, I mean, I have a lot. I have a ton of things saved to my Ravelry favorites, not my queue, but my favorites. Um, so I have a lot of ideas in my head, but I, you know, that's how I am. I'm a visionary person. So I get lots of ideas, but I need to you know, I don't have the time to do all of them, but I do know for sure that I'm going to be casting on another pair of socks for a knit along that Olivia from This Handmade Life is um, hosting. See, I told you I was going to talk about her a lot. Her Instagram feed is beautiful if you haven't seen it. Okay, so I'm making, 
I bought her wildflowers and honeycomb socks. Uh, so this knit along, I learned about it on Instagram and I think she has it posted on Ravelry. I think she's ha holding it through Ravelry and then you can hashtag your projects on Instagram. And I believe it's during January and maybe a bit into February. I need to get those details. And considering it's already January 15th, I am not sure that I'm going to get these done. However, it was a good motivator to buy this pattern and to get the skeins wound up. And as soon as I finish the toe on this sock, I'm going to cast on my first sock. So it's this pattern. It's the wildflower and honeycomb. It's beautiful. It'll be the first time I've ever put lace in my sock. Um, I probably won't make a lot of lacy socks just because the time of the year when I'm wearing socks, I want a lot of warmth because it gets cold here. But there's just something about, they just look so feminine, the lace in them, that I'm going to make them. So I'm going to show you the colors. So this is going to be my main color. This is called Barn Roof, and it's um, Angela from Willow Tree Yarn dyed this. Okay, she's on Etsy. I'll link her shop. So this is a very tonal gray and it has a lot of dimension to it. It has the gray and silver and some pink and red. And I think she said that she was inspired by it um, looking at the barn roof where they live or where she used to live or where she grew up. It was something like that. But um, it's, it's a really pretty gray with some other flecks in it. So that's going to be the main color. And then my contrasting heel, toe, and cuff is from Lichen and Lace, and it's called Huckleberry. And again, it's a very dimensional, it's probably showing up very blue on the camera. It's a tonal, and it's got purple, red, um, blues in it. it. Again, it's a very dimensional yarn. But I think these two colors are just going to look so nice together for this pattern. So like I said, I'm going to be casting on for that and whether or not I finish, we will see. But it'll be fun to participate and it's actually the first and along I've ever participated in. And I am late getting started, but okay. Another project that I'm planning on casting on for is the Land of Sweets cow by Helen Stewart. I first heard about this when I was watching Danny from Little Bobbin's Knits. She did a Vlogmas series and so I was watching that and she was using her advent minis to make this this cowl and so I thought that's a really great idea because Olivia sent me a ton of really beautiful minis that I'm going to use and they're um, this is not all that she sent me, but these are some of the colors. And then I'm also going to add in the colors from 6 and 7 Fiber, the All These Wonders mini set. So I'm going to, to do this. And I have other colors here that I may end up adding in for just like pops of color. I don't know because I don't want to get too crazy because I just said I'm not a real bright kind of a knitter. So I'm just going to start knitting and adding in the mini skeins and we will see what happens because see even the one that um, is, is featured here, I think it's really beautiful. It's really beautiful but it's a little bright for me. Most of my clothing in my, in my closet is navy, pink, like blush pink or ballet pink. Um, just very, I'm very plain. It's just me. I've tried to branch out and wear more bright colors and stuff, but I just never feel like myself in them. So be true to yourself, right? Now I want to show you guys some yarn gifts that I bought myself. Um, I bought these with some Christmas money and also, you know, with my orders, the commission orders that I that I have, I will oftentimes use that money to guiltlessly buy myself yarn. Not that my husband ever makes me feel guilty for buying yarn, but there, it's just, 
it's my own thing. He always says, he, he hates that I feel that way, but like, I just, I don't feel guilty buying yarn with money that I make by making things and selling it. Um, where it, I don't really, I don't really prefer to buy yarn with household money. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's just how my mind thinks about it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the yarn that I bought. So I, I made two purchases. One, one of them was from Julie from Sweet Sparrow Knits. I'm sorry, Sweet Sparrow Yarns. And these are the two skeins I got from her, her most recent shop update. So this first one is called Pajama Day. It's on her Nuthatch base. And it is a creamy base with um, some browns, very light browns, I would say more like a tan. And then it's got some pink and then it's uh, it has like a splashes and speckles of like a deep plum color. So that's a really pretty, really pretty yarn. I think this would also make a nice, um, that pattern I just showed you, I think this would also make a nice body of the sock for that pattern. So that's one. And then look at this. I saw this on her update and I was like, what? I have to have that skein. It's just like, I just love these colors. So this is like a coral color and then it's got a, it's got like the, the off white and then it's got speckles um, of brown, like a light brown. And then it has this minty green that's speckled as well. It's just so pretty and it's so unusual. I just thought, man, I haven't seen anything like that with those colors and the way that it was dyed. It's called Dandelion Puff and it is also on her nut hatch base, which that base is a 7525 merino nylon base. But isn't that isn't that gorgeous? I just love that. And actually Lily claimed this when this came in the mail. Um I I opened them by myself because when I get mail deliveries, particularly yarn mail deliveries. I don't know what it is, but I want to be by myself because I want to just be able to take my time and savor it. So I actually didn't even open up these packages until the day after I received them. And I, I opened them up early in the morning because I wanted, like when no one else was up, I just wanted to take my time and just enjoy the whole process. It's so weird, but that's what I'm, that's how, that's how I am. But anyway, when I showed this to Lily, she immediately said, I want socks out of that. And so I'm going to make Lily socks out of this. Um, last time, this is only the second time I've bought yarn from Julie. And the last time I bought it was not this past Christmas, but the Christmas before. And I bought her Clarice colorway, which was so pretty and cute. It had the different, it, it reminded me of Neapo, Neapolitan ice cream. Like it had the stripes of pink, two different shades of pink, and then a brown and then an off white. And I knit those for Lily, but she's outgrown them. She is 12, so she's in this period where she's growing really fast. And I, I, I wasn't even thinking when I made those for her that she'd grow out of them so fast. So she really only got a couple months wear out of them. And she's still wearing them now, but the heel part is literally on the bottom of her foot. And she's just doing her best to, to just wear them for as long as she can. So I am going to make her a pair of socks out of this and actually she's almost the same size foot as me now and I wear a seven and a half or eight so she's around like seven or seven and a half so I'm actually gonna knit these to fit my foot and the reason why is because she will grow into them and then if her feet exceed mine um, I'll get these back and I'll have them in my drawer but yes this is beautiful beautiful yarn and I love Julie's yarn because it's really it's just a really soft really soft yarn in fact, Lily, my daughter, she has a hard time. I've knit her other socks and they're always, her, she's very sensitive, her skin's very sensitive and things that I don't even feel that itchiness, she just can't take them. But she can tolerate Julie's yarn base, so I'm really happy about that. Okay, so the other order I placed was from Six and Seven Fiber. So um, Rachel dyed this up um, she did a shop update on Saturday and I literally set my alarm and then I think she posted it like 25 minutes earlier and I just happened to get on Instagram and see her, the little square saying shop update is live and I was like, ah, because there was one skein in particular that I just knew I needed to have. 
So I got on very quickly and I added it to my cart and it was the last skein and four other people had it in their cart. So when I logged on there, I had two things I wanted to buy. I wanted to buy this particular skinny yarn and then I wanted to buy another mini skein set, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but then I got on there and I started seeing all of her other stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want that and I want that too. But but I didn't know if I wanted them for sure and I needed to think about it. So what I did is I ant entered the two things that I wanted into my cart and when I saw that there was only one of the one skein left, this is making no sense. I'm just rambling. Let me just show you the skein. This is called Luna's Shoes. And this yarn is, that's referencing uh, Luna Lovegood, who happens to be, I think she's my favorite character in the Harry Potter series. She's a Ravenclaw, which I'm a Ravenclaw. I feel like such a dork. I am totally swept up in this Harry Potter craze. Never thought I would be because I'm typically, like I said last time, I'm typically not one to get swept up in things. But my last podcast, um, someone had mentioned Pottermore.com, I think it was. I think that's the, I think that's the website. Anyway, I kind of had this feeling I was a Ravenclaw, so I got on there and all of us because we're all Harry Potter fans now in this house. We all sorted ourselves. You can get on there and you open an account and you can sort yourselves. And I came back as a Ravenclaw and everybody else in my family are Gryffindors. Go figure. But anyway, Luna, love good. Her character was in the Ravenclaw house. And I just love her. I loved her from the very first time because she's just so soft-spoken and just sweet and so that's why I wanted this yarn. And it's so pretty. It's Luna's shoes and I can see exactly why. It's got purples and pinks and some blue. It's just really soft, pastel-y, yet beautifully colored yarn. Um, and this is a 7520. This is her Milo base. So 7520 Merino Nylon. And I ended up adding this onto my order later. I messaged Rachel and asked her if she could add this on because like I said I was in a hurry to purchase this because there was one left and it was in four people's carts so I, I um, ordered this later with a couple other skeins I'm going to show you here but this is the honey so it's a 20 gram skein I'm going to pair it with this I don't know if that's going to show up that great but there we go let me see if I can get this color a little bit more. So these are just going to be, I'm just going to make vanilla socks because I want to see, I want to be able to see the yarn, the patterning of the yarn. So, um, and then this will be the, the heels, toes, and cuffs. And then along with that, I also bought three other 20 gram skeins, blush, lilac, and indigo. I like to have these, um, you know, to use in my socks because it is a nylon merino base. And then I bought another All These Wonders mini kits. This is really noisy. I'm sorry. I always hear podcasters say, I'm sorry for the crinkling. And now I realize why they said that. So this is her All These Wonders mini set. This is the Milo base as well. So it's 7525. And I had bought this before and I showed it in my last podcast, but I kept looking at it and thinking of a friend that I just felt like I needed to send it to her, so I did. Um, and then Rachel, I knew Rachel was going to have these in her shop update on Saturday, so I wanted, I bought myself another set, which I'm going to add into my Land of Sweets cowl, as I already said. So that is what I bought for myself. It's always so exciting to get new yarn, isn't it? Not that I need it, because I have some downstairs. I have plenty of yarn. Um, and actually, I filmed... This is my third time filming this podcast. I filmed twice yesterday. And um, when I was watching them today to edit them, I thought, oh my goodness, the lighting down here is horrible. None of the colors are translating correctly onto the screen. So I decided I'm going to film it again. I'm going to do it upstairs where there is actually nice, a nice amount of sunlight. And, um, but when I did, I did talk about my stash a little bit in my podcast from yesterday. So I went ahead and just did a video 
a real quick video of my stash because it's not it's not a huge stash stash at all in fact you know I um and I talked about this in my podcast that I filmed yesterday but the very first time I watched Amber from the yarn hoarder I thought that she was filming in a yarn shop and then I realized that was her yarn stash it's amazing like I can't even believe it and she does say she she has said this several times in her podcast um, that her motto is big go big or go home or something like that and yeah you can definitely tell that with her her stash of yarn that she has um, so mine is nothing like that at all but what I do have there um, I really love and I have plans for most of it so I'll try to add that on here at the end of this but that is everything I just wanted to say that I do um, very much appreciate you watching this and I also wanted to let you know that my husband and I are shooting to have our website launched by the end of this month that is a website all about home it's about homesteading it's about homemade things it's about homeschooling it's just about our life here on our little two acre plot and our life in our little home that we are attempting to turn into a cottage um, it's definitely cottage sized so um, that's where we're gonna just be posting whatever we feel like posting DIY stuff um, just whatever's on our hearts and also we have a YouTube channel started I set that up Saturday night so if you would like to search for a well-nourished home YouTube channel it is I have our like our what's it called like a trailer a trailer on there for our website and um, just featuring some photos from around our, our home and our homestead so that is on there as well yeah I'd love if you're interested in that kind of stuff to uh, I'd love for you to head over there and subscribe to that and check it out let me know what you think and um, yeah hopefully the blog I have it I've been building it myself which has been quite a task because my old blog that I have had since 2008 which it was on blogger or blogspot and I you basically just get in you enter your blog I did learn a little bit of HTML just so I could alter some some things in my post but um, this it's been I've been building this website and it's been like I don't know I guess I've kind of put it off because I'm, I'm not really I haven't really enjoyed the whole building process I know I will enjoy the posting and the taking pictures and the writing but this all getting ready process has been a little it's it's really pushed me beyond my comfort zone um, but it's it's almost there I, it's almost there actually I have it ready that I could publish it um, I just need to check a couple links and and publish the site and then I can then I need, just need to write my first blog post which again that's a little scary because it's your first blog post like on my old blog I have well since 2008 I mean so what oh my gosh that's like nine years of blog posts on there when somebody comes to a new blog and there's one blog post you feel like you gotta make it a good one or they're not gonna come back so little pressure but anyway if you guys are into that kind of thing head on over to my YouTube channel or you can search, search for me on Facebook um, a well-nourished home on there as well and like our page there that's where I'm posting updates for when our blog is going to launch so thank you so much for joining me um, have a wonderful week stay warm if you're in the north like I am and um, feel free to hop over to Instagram my account on there is amber underscore Helena I'll put that in the show notes as well and I'd love to have you follow me along there thank you so much for watching okay this is my stash one book stash two that's all fingering weight no I'm sorry that's DK Here's my fingering weight and then down there in this basket is filled with um, yarn I bought for an afghan so that is my stash